this Washicha woman from Chicago. She went to a trailer house to give some shoes, and she said they must have had some kind of a school there or something, because 10 children came out of that trailer house. And she told me where it was. I said, they all live there. That's how it is on this reservation. She couldn't believe it. My nephew, he lives in one home. There's 35 people in there. Each family has a bedroom. Each of them have about five kids. It's my daughter's trailer house, and we just live here. Me and my seven kids, we're really homeless. We, we don't have a home of our own. I don't have no income. I, I try working, but I was on a program called TANF where you have to work for your welfare check. And I worked uh, last month and part of this month, but uh, my hours didn't even count because they closed my case and um, they didn't even give me a notice in my hours that I did. 80 hours on Wooden County says. And, and so at the moment, this is the outhouse. With yeah, a herd of cows came through, they knocked it over and just fell apart. And um, even one fell in the, um, the hole, so the minister had to come and uh, to get out. This is our heating stove. It holds one gallon of kerosene and it lasts for one night. And this is what I cook on. This little two burner propane heater and that's my propane tank. It lasts for four days just cooking on it for my kids. And how much does a propane tank cost? Um, it's $10 a tank and um, if I sell beadwork and make $10 I go buy a tank. And the kerosene is $10 for um, five gallon jugs, and it takes a gallon a day. But um, I don't have any income. Only way I make money is if I do beer right now. My coffee pot. Um, this trailer house came with a stove and the refrigerator, but we don't have electricity. When it rains, it all soaks and it uh, drips in the house, so we have to put buckets under here to catch the rain water, and later we pour it up. I hang this blanket here for more uh, insulation. <laughs> so friends don't work, the restroom don't work. But this is where we have our water tank. And the um, tribe delivers water um, twice a week. Sometimes we run out and need more water. We have to walk up the hill and um, carry five gallon jugs down. I put plastic on all the windows from the inside. Keeps the cold air out. There's no furnace. And I don't have no running water. I haul water. There's 16 of us that live here in a two bedroom trailer house and a teepee. Right now my son is staying in the teepee, him and his girlfriend, because they were living in a van but it got too cold. So they moved in here and I moved in a trailer. I sleep on the floor in the trailer. And will people be in the teepee through winter? Yeah. We had it all fixed up in here. We had a microwave and we was going to move our TV in here too, but we didn't. It got too cold. This is my talk her name's Alyssa. She's 10 months old and she walks. Wow. Because of these moccasins I made her. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the tribe does not pick up trash for the people that live out in the country. Mm -hmm. So everyone don't have no trash disposal. So everyone has trash dumps like this all around their houses. Mm -hmm. And so we have to burn our trash and just put it like this. And it's really a health hazard, I think. There are no jobs, so we can't work, you know, to pay our utilities. We don't get no money from the government. Uh, my family here, we sell um, beadwork, arts and crafts, and that's how we make ends meet. And most of these trailer houses don't have a uh, water hooked up. They don't have propane, they don't have furnaces. And they're uh, rejects from the city trailer lots. They're too old, so uh, they bring them down here to the reservation and just dispose of them. There's trailer houses all over, and some of them are broken and vandalized and things. We choose to live this way. We don't want to live in the cluster projects. There's too much gangster activity and too much alcoholism, too much uh, infighting. In the 70s, when Dick Wilson came in, that's when you got all of these cluster homes. And they came in with hood. A lot of our old people don't like that cluster housing. Close together, they built the houses. That's where they start fighting at each other. More and more people are being convicted that live in housing projects. Uh, Oglala Sioux Housing Authority gave up jurisdiction. So we have a no-knock entry on this reservation where if you live in a government house, the cops want to come in and break your door in and pull guns on you, they feel they have the authority to do that. This is really a harsh climate to live in. It's really cold in the winter and really hot in the summer. This elderly couple that live in a housing over here, we're out of propane, and that's when it first got cold last month, and no one could help them with propane. They both got sick. They both had uh, pneumonia. They took him to the hospital, and he was okay. His wife went into a coma, and she died. People do freeze to death here. I grew up 
when we lived in a tent and we used an outhouse. Today, I would still be living in a tent if I didn't have a friend who would lend me a trailer house, but I still used an outhouse. A student at Lakota College, she has three children. They're all suffering from asthma because of black mold in her home. On the reservation, one of the major things is housing, yet that's the least funded. At that level, it's 4% funded. That's a percentage of what the reservation actually needs to come up to a standard level on par with the United States. 